Can taking double or even quadruple the recommended amount of vitamin D protect your heart? Hi, I'm Danny Curtin. Thank you for joining me today. A recent study involving 2,500 healthy older adults found that taking higher than the recommended doses of vitamin D for five years helped lower participants' risk of a common heart rhythm disorder known as atrial fibrillation, or AFib. More than 2.5 million Americans have AFib, which is a condition that causes an irregular and very fast heart rate. This condition, which is a type of heart arrhythmia, can make your heart beat more than 400 times per minute. Compare that to a normal resting heart rate, which ranges from about 60 to 100 beats per minute. Not only terrifying and extremely uncomfortable, AFib eventually can lead to serious health problems like blood clots, stroke, heart failure, and even cardiac arrest. Health experts have been touting vitamin D for decades, primarily for its immune function benefits. The vitamin, which acts more like a hormone, also plays a crucial role in normal heart function by regulating blood pressure controlling inflammation, and aiding calcium absorption. The study, published in the American Heart Journal, involved 2,495 healthy older adults who were considered to have normal vitamin D blood levels. The participants with an average age of 68 were randomly divided into three groups. Group 1 received a placebo, while Group 2 received 1,600 IUs a day of vitamin D3, and Group 3 received 3,200 IUs a day of vitamin D3. The participants were monitored for a period of five years. When compared to the placebo group, the risk of AFib was 27% lower in the 1600 IU vitamin D group and 32% lower in the 3200 IU group. Overall, the risk of developing AFib was lowered by 30% so long as vitamin D was being supplemented with. It's worth noting that the group that performed the best was taking a 3200 IU dose, which is about four times the recommended daily value for vitamin D. If you're watching this and you have AFib, has your cardiologist brought this study to your attention? Or are you just being told that all you can do is take a blood thinner? If I had to guess, sadly, I'd say it's the latter. So why does taking larger amounts of vitamin D lower the risk of AFib? The study authors note that they don't know what the exact reasons are and that more research should be done. The problem is dietary supplement research lacks funding compared to pharmaceuticals. Since this study uses a supplement to prevent a disease, no U.S. supplement company can legally sponsor a trial. Some call this regulatory capture. I did a video on this exact topic if you want more details. But anyway, back to the study. I think it's fairly easy to deduce why the occurrence of AFib decreases with vitamin D supplementation. Many things come to mind, but I think one of the most important things is calcium. Calcium is one of the primary minerals necessary for heart function. During each heartbeat, calcium particles enter the heart muscle cells, which maintains the electrical signal needed for the heart to steadily beat. However, calcium doesn't get to where it needs to go just by being consumed. The primary method of calcium calcium absorption is regulated by vitamin D. Without adequate levels of vitamin D, calcium cannot be actively absorbed into the blood from the small intestine. With that being said, I recommend supplementing with vitamin D as well as taking an annual vitamin D blood test to all of my clients, friends, and family. At a minimum, I take 5,000 IUs per day, which is even more than the highest dose in this study, but there is plenty of credible data verifying that 5,000 IUs a day comes with virtually no adverse risk. And the health benefits are countless. If you're going to take vitamin D, make sure you take D3. A vegan source D3 is even better, and I highly suggest taking vitamin K2 along with it. As I mentioned before, vitamin D allows calcium to be absorbed into the blood, but it's vitamin K that forces calcium into the bones. You don't want excess calcium circulating in the blood without enough vitamin K, as calcification of the arteries and the organs can occur. In the end, vitamin D in larger amounts looks to play a significant role in keeping the heart functioning properly, especially for those at risk of AFib. If you have any questions, please comment below. I try to answer subscriber questions within 24 hours. So if you have an urgent question, make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please share it and give it a thumbs up. Again, I'm Danny Curtin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.